Good morning. And welcome to our service at First United Church of East Syracuse, whether you are with us in person today or through our social media. Um, two announcements have been brought to my attention. The first one is that we will have our Lenten uh, Bible study that will get started in uh, February. There is a sign-up sheet out in the narthex. Um, and please, please, please get your reports into the church office for our annual meeting in two weeks. Uh, is there anything else? No? All right. I'm going to take this time to light our candles of remembrance and our candles of peace. Our candle of remembrance is for those who keep us safe, our first responders, our veterans, our active military, all of those that are in arm's way. And our candle of peace reminds us to pray for our community, for the world, for our nation, for our nation's leaders, as, as this world just seems to get a little crazier every day. Um, we just ask that, that, that the leadership of the world, that their eyes and their ears will be opened to God's calling. Please join me in our call to worship. Come and see that the Lord is good. Come and see all the Lord has done. See, Lord, for your servants are listening. Come and know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Come and know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Come and hear all the Lord is doing. Come and hear that you are known and loved by God. Come and hear the word of the Lord. Speak, Speak Lord, Lord, for your, your servants, servants are listening. listening. Our opening hymn is number 420. Breathe on me, breath of God.
Please join me in our prayer of confession. Loving God, we come before you now, acknowledging that over the last week, we have failed to love others as you have loved us. We have not seen others in the way that you see them. We have not followed you in the way you have called us to. We have not invited others to come and see your glorious deeds. We have not even thought to know you more deeply. Forgive us, God, for those times that we have failed to live as you would have us live. For those times we have not embodied our faith. For those times that we have not glorified you with our bodies. For those times we have thought everything is about us. For those times we have rec recognized your calling to us. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Hear these words of pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. He will have mercy and he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. Let us pass the peace with one another.
Our first scripture text today is taken from the book of Samuel. 1 Samuel 3, 1 through 10. And if you'll remember, Samuel was, was dedicated to the temple. His mother prayed to God to have a son, and that if she had a son, that she would give him back to God. And she did. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare, rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was laying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am, and ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lay down again. So Samuel went and lay down. And the Lord called again. Samuel! Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call my son. Lay down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy, and therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lay down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And our next hymn is Open My Eyes That I May See, number five, excuse me, 454.
Our New Testament lesson today is taken from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses 43 through 51. Jesus is calling his disciples. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he, he, excuse me, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of God within us. The word of God among us. And the word of God in scripture. Thanks be to God. So here we are, folks, gathered in the sanctuary. You ever wonder why they called it sanctuary? a place to hide away, a safe space. You're out of the cold, you're in the nice warm, you're among friends, there's nothing threatening you here, unless that weather alarm goes off again. Uh, but, but here we are in a place that shuts the world out so that we can focus, we can center. Um, there are traditions where you spend about an hour just sitting in silence, centering and then you go home. Um, I shouldn't say that, or maybe you'd rather be there. But uh, we have to shut the world out, and we have to listen if we're going to hear God's voice. And when we get so caught up in the world, sometimes it's hard to hear that. Um, it's said in the scripture uh, for today, I probably should have brought my sermon with me. It said in the scripture for, uh, for this day, there was the, the conversation with, uh, with uh, Eli. It said, now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days, and visions were not widespread. Now, doesn't that sound like today, that, that the word of the Lord is rare in these days, and visions are not widespread? Anybody... Ever heard God speak? I want to meet you if you did. Anybody had a vision? Yeah, see, it's rare. Um, Lily Tomlin once said, Why is it that when people talk to God, we call it prayer, and when God talks back, we call it schizophrenia? <laughs> people are both hungry and afraid to hear God's call for them. When does God speak to us? Well, God speaks in the unexpected. God speaks in the midst of our pain and our turmoil because that's when we're paying attention. Not necessarily in the middle of looking at a sunset. I've told you the story before about the, the one time in my life I can, I can clearly say God spoke to me. 
and I hope you don't think I'm nuts afterwards. I've told you about this. I was living next door to the church. Somebody left the lights on. It's 1130 at night. I get a call, you know, could you go turn the lights off? Grumbling, I went out the door, stumbled over to the church. When I went in, the only light that was on was behind the cross, and the cross was shining out into the sanctuary. I'm still in a crappy mood. And I'm saying, <clears throat> what am I doing here with these people? And a single word came to my head, which was far from what I was thinking. The single word was training. I was being trained to put up with irritating people. I was being trained to put up with God's church people who can be, I'm sorry, irritating sometimes. I was being trained to respond and sacrifice when it's needed. I didn't hear a voice, but an idea out of the blue in that environment, where did out of the blue come from? I was not looking to be trained. God spoke to Eli through a young boy. Samuel had a message for Eli. It was a message Eli didn't want to hear. The message, if you had read further down, the message is that Eli's family had blasphemed the Lord and Eli didn't do anything about it and now Eli was going to suffer the wrath of God. The thumb was going to come down and smush his family. That was the message Samuel brought to Eli. We got a word uh, from the Lord in a manger. When a baby was born and a life began, a life that would show us about forgiveness and grace and how to respond to persecution with love. God finds us where we are. And we need to be ready to hear that call. What are the conditions for hearing the message? I'm one of those skeptical kind of people. If you uh, make some absurd claim to me, then I want to see the evidence. I want you to lay it all out for me. How did you come to that conclusion? I'm like Thomas, you know. Show me the holes in your hands and the, the spear mark in your side, and then I'll believe. And I'm that guy. Some people say seeing is believing. I'm, I'm one of those people. If I see it, yeah, okay, I'll believe it. But you know what? The opposite is true, too. Believing is seeing. You will not see God operating if you don't look at the world through the eyes of faith. If you don't look expectantly, if you don't think God is at work in the world, you won't see God at work in the world. But once you do, and once you believe, then you will see God in some amazing places. You have to be persistent in your faith. You have to be vulnerable and humble in your faith. You have to trust that God is there in the midst of everything you're going through. And when you believe that, you'll see it. If you think about the story of Samuel, what was Samuel doing when he got the call of God? He was laying down at night. He was laying down in front of the Ark of the Covenant in which sat the Ten Commandments, the very throne of God. It's where God came down and sat during the, the exodus and the tent would fill with smoke. He was sleeping there laying down there with a life that was dedicated to the service of God. And that's when he heard these three rounds of voices. I, I love this. I, I wish the uh, translation um, was a little more sarcastic than it is. I mean, my reading of it would be, you know, Samuel, Samuel. 
you got to have a, just a hint of a Jewish accent there. Samuel. And, and he gets up and he runs to Eli and he says, Here I am. Here I am, old man. I am your servant. It's like, no, no, it wasn't me. And the kids think it, yeah, right. Then who was it? We're the only ones here. And he goes back, he lies down like he said, and then he hears it again. Samuel, Samuel. And I, ah, Jesus, will this guy leave me alone? I'm trying to sleep here. He gets up, he goes, he sees again. No, go back, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. And then a third time, it's like now it's okay. Huh. I know I'm working for this guy, but still. And he goes and he says, no, no, it wasn't me. And then he's told, wait a minute. Eli points out, this must be God talking to you. Go back and lay down and wait. Can you imagine that wait? I'm laying down now in front of the Ark of the Covenant, and God is speaking to me, and I'm to say, um, speak, for your servant is listening. What is God going to say to me? So he is laying there in anxious anticipation, listening for the word of God and willing to respond to it. He's there in faith. He's there in vulnerability. And he's there in trust. That's what it takes to hear. Now once you've heard that call and you've accepted that it is the call of God, that, that means you're going to have to change. Because God is calling you to something different from what you've been. Change isn't always easy. In my days at Hardin Furniture, I was also a, a local pastor at the time. And I was preaching on this text and, and, you know, about how we're all supposed to invite somebody, come and see and all that. So... I went to one of my uh, colleagues that was working there that I knew was not a church person, and I invited him to church. I had done my duty for the week. I figured one a week, what more could one ask? I asked this guy, and he said, no thanks. I went to church once, and I came home with a wife, and I'm not going back for seconds. <laughs> he went to church, and it changed his life. If he'd go again, it would change some more. Church means change, change for the better. The process theologians tell us that God is imminent, that God is ever-present, that God is with us in every decision we make, every fork in the road we come to. Are we going to go this way or that way? And God is there saying, yeah, I think you should go this way. And then if you don't go that way and you go this way instead, then God's over here. I think you should go this way. God is a lure that lures us in a direction. Some people call it conscience. I think it's more than that. If we follow God's way, things will change. If we follow God's way, we will invite other people along the way too. Invitation is a part of it. Philip went and encountered Jesus, and it so changed his life that he couldn't keep it to himself. And so he ran off to, to his friend Nathaniel, and he said, Nathaniel, I found the very Messiah. You've got to come and see. This guy, it's Joseph's son from Nazareth. And Nathaniel said, Nazareth? Are you kidding me? This guy comes from Nazareth and you think he's the Messiah? This guy comes from East Syracuse. Are you kidding me? Can anything good come out of East Syracuse? Come and see. That was the invitation. Philip was excited about his discovery. He wasn't able to prove who it was that he found. He couldn't give any good evidence, but what he could do is he could invite. Come and see for yourself. Seeing is believing. And then if you believe, then you'll really see, and you'll be changed. What a witnessing tool this invitation 
come and see is. You see, evangelism is about touch. It isn't about technique. Some people think if I'm going to be an evangelist, then I got to learn how to preach. I got to learn how to argue. I got to learn how to put people on the spot, make them feel so guilty they can't stand it, and then offer them the only way out. That's evangelism. No, that's abuse. What are the best church builders? They're the people who invite the people who make connection with other people, real connection, and then invite. And witness is faithfulness. Philip is called, so Philip goes calling, even on a skeptical person like Nathaniel. And Nathaniel is brought in. Witness is the overflow from a life that has been transformed. When you come and see, you are changed, you are transformed, and you take that transformed you to go out and invite others to have that experience. So go out and share what really touches you. Tell about the times that you knew God was there and present. Tell about your encounters with Jesus. This makes people want to come and see. They want to know exactly what you're talking about. My wife and I just went and saw a, a, a really great band from Ireland. Uh, their name is Socks in a Frying Pan. It's a strange name. It's uh, three guys. It's uh, um, an accordion and a fiddle and a guitar, and their, their music is just incredible. And they were at the 443 Social Club. My wife and I have joined this social club. Now, it's not what you would think of as a social club. It's a a venue for bands. And it's a room eh, about the size of this one with a bunch of tables in it. And you're there with the band. You can almost reach out and touch the band. It's a very intimate relation uh, that you have with the band. And part of the deal in that place is uh, once the band starts, you shut up because you're there to listen to music. Unlike other environments where people are yapping the whole time, it's about the music. Now, we got involved in this thing and now we're hooked. In fact, we're, we're hooked to the point where it's getting mighty expensive. But, <laughs> but how did we get hooked? Some music loving friends of ours said, we got this great place, come and see. In fact, the first time there, they paid our way. And we were guests, and we sat at their table, because, and we trusted them. They were friends of ours, and they invited us, and we came, and we loved it. And we're going back again and again, and we're getting more and more invested in it. Now, what does that mean for the church? Come and see. Imagine if everybody here said for the next year, within a year, I'm going to make sure that I have invited someone who has come to see and has stuck. I got a year to do it. How hard is that? And with success, the church is doubled this time next year. And that continues, then it's doubled again in another year, and doubled again in another year, and then you're shopping for a new building. What a terrible idea to have to do that. Come and see. Peter and John were facing the Sanhedrin, and they were being quizzed. The Sanhedrin was not happy with them going around preaching about this resurrected Jesus. It was getting people all riled up, and the Sanhedrin couldn't stand it. Acts 4, 19 and 20. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourself whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. Ooh, them's fighting words, right? For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. 
when you have seen and heard the working of God in your midst, how can you be quiet about it? God calls, we answer, we change, we invite. So if we invite and we're successful and our friends come to this place, what will they see? What will they hear? Well, one thing they'll see is the stains of humanity. They will find that there aren't a whole lot of perfect people in this building. In fact, if they're here looking for hypocrites, they won't have to look too far. There's one in the pulpit. Aren't we all? But they will also see that in spite of this, in spite of all our flaws, God is here and working in our midst. Our people lend a hand to the needy. The hungry get fed. The longing find God. Those looking for spiritual depth find an opportunity to learn. Lives get changed in spite of all the things that we do wrong. Can anything good come out of the First United Church of East Syracuse? You bet it can. God has given a vision. This is a welcoming Christian community, empowering and supporting all of God's people. On a mission to cultivate a a viable and vital Christ-centered family that strengthens one another in the walk in life. Invite them to come and see. We're not meant to merely come, be fed, go home and nap. That isn't God's plan. There were two robins sitting in a tree looking out over a freshly plowed field. And the plow had turned up the soil and there were worms everywhere. And the robins, oh, it's feasting time. And so they flew down and they're just gorging themselves on all these big juicy worms. And they just ate until they couldn't eat anymore. And the one said to the other, well, we should leave. And I said, oh, man, I can't. I am so full. Let's just take a nap. And so they laid down to take a nap, and along came a cat, gobbled them both up. The cat sat there wiping his lips, if cats have lips, I don't know, do you call them lips, I guess. Wiping his lips and said to himself, "Ah, I do love Baskin Robbins. (laughs) Dad joke. Will we be the people that came and ate so much of God's food that all we could do is lay around and sleep? I don't think so. God wants better for us. Come and see, and you'll learn that something good can come from Nazareth. So put yourself in a position to hear the call of God. Look at the world through the eyes of faith. Look for those who God is using to help you here. Accept the call. Yield to the forces of change. Tell others of your experience and invite them to come and see. And help them to learn to listen and to yield and to witness. That's what it means to be the church of Jesus Christ. That's what it means to be a Christian. Come and see. Let us pray. Holy God, we are here in a quiet moment, yielded and still. We come here to your sanctuary each week to escape the noise of the world in hopes of an encounter with you. Help us, O Lord, to discover your vision for our lives. For our part, we will seek your call and take on our mission with humility and enthusiasm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Oh, that's a good question. Did you hear her? How, how many came here because someone invited you here? <laughs> yep, that's the number one tool. For those of you that are worshiping in person with us today, you can leave your offering in the uh, container out in the North X. Uh, if you are not worshiping with us in person, Please send your tithes to the church at 823 Franklin Park Drive. Um, you know, the bills continue, uh, so things still need to be paid. And Christy shall lead us in the doxology. <laughs> In our dedication. Generous God, all that we have comes from you, and all that we offer you is your own. We ask that you accept and bless these our gifts of money, but also the gifts of ourselves, our bodies, our minds, our hearts, that we may know you more closely and invite others to come and see. Amen. Come to the time in our service of our joys and concerns. I see Paul's over there getting the, the mic ready. So is there anyone who's had a joy this week or, or a concern, a prayer request? Uh, Candace Bergen called just before the service. Her husband... Eric had heart surgery, open heart surgery on Thursday, and he is in the hospital. That's why they are not here this morning. So prayers for his recovery from that surgery. Um, also, I would like to ask for prayers for my sister-in-law's mother, Sally Jasko. She has <clears throat> entered into hospice, so um, she's not expected to live much longer. So prayers to ease her passing and for her family's grief. I have a couple of things. Um, I'm sure you're well aware that many people to the North Country, in the North Country were without power this past week. And my brother was one of those and his two sons. Um, my brother's in a wheelchair, so it was particularly difficult for him. He couldn't even get to his medicine. Um, but they survived it, and everything is, everything is okay at this point. But his son is the one that you've been praying for that had the tracheotomy in St. Joseph's Hospital. And he came home with the power out. Um, he does have cancer. So he's 53 years old. His name is Joey. Uh, 
Uh, Gladys would like to say thanks to everybody that sent cards and all of you that continue to send their prayers for her way over her sister. She's just not able to get out in public yet. <laughs> thanks. Um, this last Monday, uh, Joan O'Mara, my grandmother, had peacefully passed away in her sleep. Um, she has been uh, buried next to my grandfather in uh, the Green Cemetery in Ithaca. We should be having a memorial service within the next week or so. For all those who want to attend, we will keep you updated. And if you could keep my mother in your prayers, her health is also failing her. Um, if we could just keep our entire family in your prayers, that would be great. Don Bukowski asked me to thank everyone for the cards and the prayers that she has been receiving. Um, she's going to be kind of staying away for a while until she has some procedures done. So I um, just wanted to pass that on to you. Um, also, Panera Bread in Cicero on this Tuesday between 4 and 8 p.m. I plan to attend um, to honor the memory of C.C. Combs Andrews. The 25% um, of proceeds during that time will go to Central New York SPCA. Um, also, uh, prayers for safe travels for my grandson, Travis, as he heads west to go back to school. I hope he's not going to be stupid. I mean, um, I hope he's going to be cautious on the road. <laughs> and also for my grandson, Grayson, who has a broken collarbone, broken collarbone as a result of an automobile accident in Utah uh, as there was another driver going the wrong way on the highway. Thank you. Um, prayers for my next door neighbor who passed away, the family of the Dina Talley family, for their, um, his wife and was having a very hard time. They were in Florida on vacation when he passed away. They'd only been there for a couple of days and she drove all night to come back. So um, for her and her family, I ask for prayers. Thank you. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Grant us your light, O God. For like Eli, we have been unseeing. We've wandered about in a darkness of our own making. We've stumbled on the bricks and stones of our own laying. We've been terrified of strange sounds and retreated to our own beds. Yes, Lord, we know Eli well. Send us the presence that came to him through the words of Samuel. O God of Samuel, grant us clarity of vision. For like Samuel, we've been confused. Voices shout, whisper, grumble at us from all sides. At the shouting we tremble, at the whispering we shiver, at the grumbling we shrink. Which voice is yours? Which one ours? Which one theirs? Which do we follow? Which do we ignore? Yes, Lord, we know Samuel well. Send us the clear vision that came to him through the guidance of his blind friend, Eli. O God of Philip, Man of Galilee, grant us courage. For like Philip and his friends, we have been anxious. Who would be our leader? Many would rule us, many would tempt us, but the ruler's domination concedes little freedom. The teacher's instruction yields little enlightenment, and the tempter's persuasion offers little satisfaction. Yes, Lord, we know Philip well. Send us the courage that came to him when he found where Christ was abiding, the courage to reach out to our neighbors with the message of Christ's coming, and the consolation and comfort of his abiding presence and with the healing that only he can bring. And direct us, O Lord, with your still small voice to those who need the message or a touch from you today. This morning we have lifted up many who are suffering physically. We pray for Eric and for Grayson. 
We pray for Joey. We pray for Sally. We know all of these physical ailments bring traumas that are beyond the physical. And we pray that if we can be of some comfort, we might feel the urge to reach out with a card, with a call, with a visit, that we might bring your strength to people that are in need. And we pray this morning for those who are grieving, for the Omera family, the Donatelli family, for the Jasco family. Loss is such an important part of our lives, but we do have the comfort of our faith. Help us, Lord, to reach out to those who are grieving, to offer a shoulder when a shoulder is needed, to offer space when space is needed. We thank you for all the blessings that, that we have been given. We thank you for this fundraiser for the SPCA in, in memory, and we pray for its success. We pray for all those that are traveling in this difficult travel time, and for those who are without power, for those who are stranded, we pray, O oh Lord, protection. May we be filled with your spirit so that we may be your hands for those who are in need this day. O oh God, we are not our own. Our hearts are yours. Fill them. Our hearts are yours. Reassure them. Our hearts are yours. Inspire them. Our hearts are yours. Empower them. Transform them into your temples, and we will listen for that still small voice. We pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Will you receive the benediction? Go forth from this place to be known completely by God and to come to know God more deeply. Go forth and see God in action and call others to see it too. Go forth and embody God's love to all those you meet. Amen.